Hey guys, Cameron here with Emerson Property Management. Every week I bring you tools, tactics, strategies, lessons I've learned, things that have helped me build up a sizable rental portfolio in about two years. Now manage that portfolio. Today, guys, I want to talk about preventative maintenance walkthroughs. Are you doing preventative maintenance walkthroughs? I didn't when I first started. Nope. Did not go into the property. If the tenant didn't call me and report something or put in a task through the system, I did not go. That was a big, big no-no. I know there are some, I have actually some friends who are seriously wealthy investors, triple digit unit counts themselves, not into these bullshit syndications where oh, I own a tenth of a thousand units or a hundredth of a hundred units. No, these guys are legit and they don't like property inspections, but I'll tell you why I do. I used to not go in unless the tenant called something, there was the renewal came up and we need to get in to do an inspection before or just check the property right before we started listing it, right? We go put a sign in the yard. We're getting ready to market for the new tenant. We walk in and it's a total disaster. Or, you know, there's a water leak that nobody reported. There's somebody living there that nobody mentioned. There's a dog they have that nobody mentioned. So all these things can pre be prevented with a preventative maintenance walkthrough. We like to do them semi-annually. So we do them at the six month mark. We do them once they renew. If, if the property looks good, maybe we'll kick that down a little bit. But if not, once they renew, we go out and check the property again, especially if it's marginal or, or the folks, you know, um, looked a little bad on the six month one, we'll definitely do the one again on the, the year. And that has just, just them knowing, hey guys, we're going to be in here every six months. And, and the walkthrough is so simple. Um, that makes them think, oh shit, I got to make sure I take care of this property and make sure that I'm, I'm, I'm minding my P's and Q's because they're going to be inspecting. Um, so what do we, what is, and what, what is a preventive maintenance walkthrough and what gets the most out of it? Or how do you get the most out of that? So again, we set the expectation up front. We let them know that we're going to be in there in six months. Do it even, tell them you're going to be in there every six months, even if you're not. Just tell them that. That will tell them, oh God, I better not, you know, play around here or mess around because, Mr. Owner is going to come in or Mr. Property Manager is going to come in every six months and give me a hard time. So what do you do if you actually do do a preventive maintenance walkthrough? And I highly, highly, highly recommend it. It was It's definitely a game changer for us. It will save you thousands of dollars in deferred maintenance because some of the tenants do not like to report a water leak, do not like to report, you know, um, Water's probably been the most the most significant one, or something growing, um, or, or or damaged siding, or um, you know issues with the property that go going unresolved or unmaintained can become an issue. Oh yeah, I saw that hole in the siding, but I didn't say anything. I didn't think it was a big deal. Well now, it, water got in there and it's rotten all the inside of the, the 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 wood siding, or it's gotten in and rotten all the dry wood drywall out of the inside. So, you know, sometimes they just don't know. And then I know what you're going to say because I said it first too. Well, then it's going to be the tenant's fault. Are you kidding me? You think you're actually going to get $1,000, $500 from a tenant for something they damaged? <laughs> no, you're not. They're going to leave in the middle of the night. They're not going to pay that. Um, I've had a very difficult time getting anything out of tenants if they cause damage, even if they cause, you know, sewage stoppages. You know, you, people put feminine products down in the sewer line, it backs up, they call us, we send them the bill, it's three, four, five hundred dollars $500. Hey, wh what are you talking about? What do we do? Blah, blah, blah. It's in the contract. People not putting putting uh, grease or something down the uh, the sink. We call, we come out, run a snake, bunch of grease. We bill them back for it. They get frustrated. So then the tenants don't want to talk to you, which here, so... There's this dynamic you guys got to play, and it's it's a very it's a delicate balance. You want them to report stuff, but you also don't want them to report every single thing um, that they get, or ignore stuff that's not th that's serious. You know, so you've got this balance. I want you to report, but I don't want you to report every single thing. I want you, especially the important stuff, um, and you've got to just play with that. You know, you don't want the tenants to um, to to feel like they can't come to you, that you're going to charge them for everything. So you've got to be very clear up front. We set very high tenant expectations up front. 
Paragraph 17B of the lease, 17A of the lease, here are your tenant responsibilities. We even shorten that in another document. Highlight it. Show them this is what you're responsible for. You're responsible for cutting your grass. You're responsible for pest control. You're responsible for sewage stoppages. You're responsible for X, Y, Z. Keep going, keep going, keep going, you know? Um, so when we do the preventative maintenance walkthrough, I'm going to tie this all in. When we go back to do the preventative maintenance walk, we check for those things. Is the tenant maintaining the yard and the shrubs? Is the tenant taking care of the property? Is there anybody there? Is there anybody there, people or pets that aren't supposed to be there? Um, is there any water damage? We look through every room. I mean, you just look up at the ceiling or the roof leaks. You look around the window seals. Is there anything around there that um, that that could be a problem? Um, I know I have another video. We'll put it up here or here um, regarding um, uh, a walkthrough I did to kind of show you some of the stop spots and other things we look for. I'm actually at the property holding the, the phone, walking through it. So um, be careful if you're a little wheezy because that video is all bouncing around. Um, and yeah, that's it. We have one a one pager. It's been so helpful. We list some of the tenant responsibilities. We tell them, hey, if we find any violations, we're going to let you know about it now. Um, or if we find owner responsibilities, then we'll let you know as well. Uh, we'll get those taken care of. Um, and we just kind of, you know, have a good a good conversation. We if they're not there, we leave that piece of paper with them, uh, so they can read it later at a later date. And that's it. It usually takes the inspection usually takes, you know, 20 minutes. To, if they're there and they're chatty Cathy, that might go to 30 minutes to an hour. But it really takes longer to drive to the property and drive out. And honestly, what we're looking for is what I mentioned. People, pets, problems. Um, and specifically when I say problems like related to water or something that they're not reporting. You know, we had a lady, we were walking around looking at the window seals and she said, and we said, oh my God, what's what's going on here? I'll, I didn't even notice that. It's like, you didn't notice this water leak coming in here out of the window? And it was started rotting out some of the drywall. So we found a piece of, of flashing that wasn't properly installed. Um, boom, fixed. That could have been something that started rotting out a lot more of the drywall. Who knows how long it would have went. If we're, if the, especially if the tenant renews. That's the other thing. If a tenant renews, you might not get in there for... I just told you our average length of tenancy is three years. Well, maybe I told you that in another video, but our average length of tenancy is over three years. So we might not get in there. If you don't do any inspections, you're not going to get in there for three years. That property can be totally destroyed. There'd be a whole host of new families living in there. You don't have any idea. So what do you guys want to take out of this video or what am I getting at? Do preventative maintenance walks. If you don't do it, just tell them you're going to do it. That will prevent a lot of headaches with the with the personnel. If you do do them, you don't need a fancy software or anything. We have it, but that's just because we get that kind of thrown in with our property management system and whatnot. Just walk them. Walk every room. Look for leaks. Look for anything that looks odd. Oh my gosh, there's discoloration on the ceiling. Maybe it's a roof leak. Hey, there's some discoloration around the window seals or termite damage or something. Just rotten wood, things that have um, you know serious consequences. And again, if left unattended to, become bigger problems. We, I really don't care if the floor has a little stain on it. We'll charge them for that when they move out. I'm not going to get a fuss about that. But if the drywall is starting to rot underneath the window, there's a problem we need to get into and take care of immediately. So I hope that was helpful, guys. If it was, let me know. If it wasn't, let me know. I appreciate you guys watching. If you find it valuable, share it with somebody. And I'll catch you all next week.